Hey FRT community, in this video I'm answering these five points related to automatic tube compensation. Let's dive in. Okay, so when we talk about automatic tube compensation, you need to understand when is this going to affect my patient and when it is not. So the first question we see here on the board, which I've been receiving lately, is when do I utilize ATC? And the answer to that is any mode where you have spontaneous breaths happening. Okay, any mode. So this could be SIMV, this could be CPAP, this could be APRV or bi-level. Any type of mode where a patient can take a spontaneous breath, ATC, automatic tube compensation, will be relevant to providing enough support to that patient to overcome the resistance of the artificial airway. Okay, that's what ATC does. Automatic tube compensation. It compensates for the resistance of the artificial airway. Now, if you're using different vents, it may be called different things. Um, I know the Bennett uh, ventilator calls it ATC. I know the, uh, the Avia calls it AAC, which is artificial airway compensation. So different vents call it different things, but it's the same. Okay, now the second question here is, is how do I use it? Well, the first thing you have to do is within whatever specific ventilator you're using, you have to activate ATC or AAC. You have to tell the vent that this is how I want to assist the patient during spontaneous breathing. So how do you use it? You First of all, you have to turn it on. Now, once you turn it on, it's going to ask you for the diameter of the artificial airway as well as the length of the artificial airway. Now this may seem like a silly question, but think about it. An 80 endotracheal tube is not the same as an 80 tracheostomy tube. You have to go back to your airway resistance um, factors. We know that length affects airway resistance. We know that diameter affects airway resistance. So an 8.0 endotracheal tube is going to have more airway resistance than an 8.0 tracheostomy tube because the tracheostomy tube is shorter or the endotracheal tube is longer. So you have to not only tell the diameter, but you also have to tell what type of tube it is or how the length of the tube. So how to use it properly, you have to um, tell the vent what size and type in the tracheal tube or tracheostomy tube so that the vent knows how much airway resistance to compensate for based off of the information that you tell it. Okay, so that's important. How do I use it? Turn it on and be sure and tell the vent the correct airway that you were trying to compensate for. Now this next question says how much support is my patient getting when they're on ATC? Now I see a lot of us, especially as old school therapists, we have this mindset of if I'm in CPAP I want to give pressure support and I know exactly how much support that patient is getting. So if they're on a CPAP of 5 and a pressure support of 5 then I know exactly how much inspiratory support is being provided to my patient. Now what we see here with ATC is this frustration where I don't know how much support they are getting. Well let me tell you this, it's very very easy. It's simple this. PIP minus PEEP or CPAP equals the amount of support. So if your PIP is 9 and you're starting at a CPAP or a PEEP of five, then you know that your automatic tube compensation is offering your patient four centimeters of support during inspiration. Let's say your iPad, let's say your inspiratory pressure or your peak inspiratory pressure is 12 and, and you're on a PEEP of five. Then we know that the automatic tube compensation is offering seven centimeters of support on top of the baseline, which is PEEP or CPAP. Okay, so all you have to do is look at your peak inspiratory pressure, subtract your baseline, 
which is PEEP or CPAP, and that tells you how much support the automatic tube compensation is actually applying for your patient during their spontaneous breaths. Remember, it's only spontaneous breaths. ATC or AAC in assist control is doing nothing because every breath is a machine controlled breath, a ventilator controlled breath, or just a controlled breath, or sometimes what we call an assisted breath, but never in any time when you're talking about an assist control mode of mechanical ventilation, should you use the term spontaneous breath? And if you're not gonna use the word spontaneous breath, then we're not talking about ATC, just like we're not talking about pressure support. So you think about it the same way. It, it, you wonder why there's not a pressure support option when you're in the AC mode, like where's the pressure support button? There's not one because there's no spontaneous breathing happening. There's only assisted and controlled breaths, but there's no true spontaneous breathing. Now we go into SIMV and guess what shows up? Pressure support. Well, that's because there's true spontaneous breathing. In SIMV, since there's true spontaneous breathing, the potential for true or the ability for true spontaneous breathing, then there's also the ability to augment and to, uh, to assist those spontaneous breaths with ATC, okay? Understand that and understand that the difference is your peep minus your peep on your spontaneous breaths, okay? So keep that in mind. So I've, I've been talking about pressure support. Um, and so the, another question I get is, what's the difference between ATC and pressure support? Well, the difference is this, okay? ATC takes into the account of the artificial airway and provides just enough support to overcome the calculated resistance of that airway. Now pressure support just tells the vent upon inspiration increase the pressure by this much and then cycle off and allow for exhalation. It doesn't, pressure support doesn't care if it's, if it's providing enough for the artificial airway or not. So for example, if you have a 8.0 um, endotracheal tube versus an 8.0 tracheostomy tube, which I used this earlier, okay? If you're using ATC, the 8.0 endotracheal tube is going to receive more inspiratory support upon inspiration to overcome the increased airway resistance of the 8.0 in the tracheal tube. The 8.0 tracheostomy tube has less resistance. So the ATC for the 8.0 tracheostomy tube will provide less inspiratory support. It'll do this based off of an algorithm and a calculation that the vent does itself, figures the airway resistance of the artificial airway, and adjust accordingly. But if you put a pressure support of five onto an 8.0 in the tracheal tube, and then patient, another patient has an 8.0 tracheostomy tube, and you put them on a pressure support of five, what you need to understand is you're actually offering more support to the patient with the tracheostomy tube because they actually have a lower airway resistance from their artificial airway. So that pressure support of five is not equal across tracheostomy tubes, ET tubes, and various sizes of each, where the ATC accommodates and is specific to the various sizes and lengths of artificial airways. So that's the difference. Five of, you say, okay, we're gonna do everything the same. We're gonna do CPAP of five and pressure support of five on all of our SBTs. And it doesn't matter the varying sizes of artificial airways. Well. While that's a common practice, it's actually a flawed practice because there's actually more support being given to the artificial airways with less airway resistance. To where if you did CPAP with ATC activated with the correct information that we talked about up here, then you would truly be comparing apples to apples to where every patient is being extubated with the appropriate amount of minimal support to overcome the resistance of the airways, of the artificial airways, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Pressure support is a set number, 
Okay, it's not going to change. You have pressure support of five is a pressure support of five. ATC is only going to provide enough inspiratory pressure to overcome the resistance of the, of the artificial airway. And that will vary depending on what size airway you have. So same patient has an 8.0 in the tracheal tube, but day number two, the next day gets trached with an 8.0 tracheostomy tube. Pressure support of five for the ET tube and a pressure support of five for the tracheostomy tube, not the same. But if you change your ATC from when you go from an endotracheal tube to a tracheostomy tube, you will see that your support should go down because your airway resistance is less with the tracheostomy tube than what it is with an endotracheal tube. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, be sure and leave me a comment in the, uh, in the, in the comments below. Throw your question up. Let me know what you think about this, and, and I'll respond to you and get back with you and hopefully clarify that, okay? Now, the last, thing to no the last point here is things to note. A lot of ventilators allow you to choose how to assist spontaneous breathing. You can do it through ATC. You can do it, do it through um, you know, various names. Like I said, artificial airway compensation. You can do it through pressure support. You can even go into another mode where it's neither of those and you do something like uh, proportional assist ventilation where it's talking about PAV, okay? which is a topic I'm going to be putting out here real soon. But my point here is, is that if your ventilator allows you to have a pressure support setting along with an ATC or an artificial airway compensation. The Bennett 840 does not do this. The Avia will allow you to have both dialed in. The vent does not understand that I should only be providing one of these. So the vent will actually provide an automatic airway, an artificial airway compensation pressure, but will also apply the set or, or dialed in amount of pressure support. So you need to be aware of this. If you have a patient on a CPAP of five and a pressure support of eight, then your peak inspiratory pressure should be about 13. But if your peak inspiratory pressure is 20, then you've got some more support coming in here that is being masked and may make your patient look relatively good or really good when they may not do so hot if they were only getting support from one of these. Let me give you an example. <coughs> Excuse me. We were taking care of a patient and the patient had an 8.0 tracheostomy tube. Now, this patient was a failure to wean. They, uh, on CPAP of five with a pressure support of 10, they were tachypnic. Their tidal volumes were, were, were super low, like in the, in the low 200s. Uh, their rate was in the 30s. And the patient was just not able to come off the ventilator. They were very, very sick. We come in one day and this patient is breathing 12 times a minute. And I said, wow, what happened? And the night shift therapist tells me that, oh, don't worry about it. I took care of him. I got him fixed up. And I said, okay, well, what'd you do? And they said, well, I just turned on the artificial airway compensation. And I said, okay, um, you know, okay, okay, I'll take a look at it. So when you tell me you turned on artificial airway compensation, in my mind, I think you turned on the artificial airway compensation and you turned off the pressure support, but that's not what happened. See, the therapist that said they turned on the artificial airway compensation turned on the artificial airway compensation and told the ventilator that the artificial airway was a 6.0 in the tracheal tube, not an 8.0 tracheostomy tube. So the artificial airway compensation is going, okay, I got a long tube and a very skinny tube, so I've got a lot of airway resistance, so I have to provide a lot of inspiratory support to overcome this artificial airway resistance. That's the way it's supposed to work. This particular ventilator, being the Avia vent, does not know the difference in AAC or pressure support, so you can have both of them dialed in. So the patient's getting eight of pressure support, on top of a CPAP of five. So their peak inspiratory pressure should have been about 13. 
Starting at five, raised by eight, puts you at 13. Yet their peak inspiratory pressures were coming in at 21. You see, there was an additional eight of automatic tube compensation or artificial airway compensation that was being applied to this patient behind the scenes that only respiratory therapists are aware of. So the doc comes in and sees this person looking good and they want to start them on trait collar trials where we know this patient is not ready for trait collar trials because if you take away that AAC and you only give them eight of pressure support, which is minimal support, then they become tachypnic, their tidal volumes become low, uh, very, very low, and they don't tolerate it. So yeah, but they look good right now. They do look good, but what you have to understand is if your peak pressures were 21 and your CPAP was five, then you actually had an inspiratory pressure support of 16 being applied. And that's a very different story from a pressure support of eight and a CPAP of five. Very, very, very different story. Okay? So this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. You can make your patients look good, but you're lying when you do it. Okay? You're creating a false positive image of how the patient's doing if you can have your AAC or your ATC and your pressure support activated at the same time. So what I'm telling you is you should have one or the other if your vent allows you to have both at the same time. Now, like I said, if you're working with the Bennett's, this is not a problem. You can only have one or the other. But other vents out there may allow you to have both of these activated at the same time and you need to be the one to understand and to educate your staff and educate your, 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 your fellow co-workers that no, if you have pressure support dialed in and we're going to use pressure support to help overcome the resistance and augment spontaneous tidal volume, then the AAC or the ATC needs to be turned off. If we're not going to use pressure support, then we should turn the ATC or the AAC on, okay? So those are things to note about ATC and AAC in regards to pressure support and spontaneous breathing. You can extubate a patient that looks real good, and if you're not aware that they're getting double the inspiratory support and then they crump very, very fast, you're like, I don't know why. Everything looks so good. Well, that's probably why, okay? so. Quick wrap up, wrap up on ATC, automatic tube compensation. Remember, it only affects spontaneous breathing, therefore will only be active in spontaneous breathing modes. Be sure and set the right into tracheal tube or tracheostomy tube side for your patient. Remember, if you ever wanna know how much support the patient's actually getting, just subtract PIP from PEEP or CPAP and that'll tell you how much the, the automatic tube compensation is actually providing to your patient. It is not the same of pressure support because it is specific to the size of the artificial airway where pressure support is not and never utilize pressure support and ATC together at the same time. It only gives you a false sense of patient presentation. Okay, I hope this helps. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you liked it and you found it beneficial and you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. Turn on the all, all notifications on the bell and, and all you'll do is just get notifications of when I upload videos. That's it. If you don't like them, unsubscribe. But I would appreciate a subscribe button hit right now. And more than anything, I appreciate comments because I like to interact.